Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on skill 14, classifying polynomials. So when we get started with that, let's take a second to get, um, to define what a polynomial is. So make sure you get out your notes, whatever you're taking notes with. Um, a polynomial function is when x is raised to a non-negative whole number power. So, for example, x to the first, x squared, x third, x fourth, x fifth, x zero. Those are all whole number non-negative powers. So this is asking us to identify if it's a polynomial function or not. So 8 to the square root of x, this is like 8x to the 1 half. So even though this 5 is a positive exponent, this 1 half is not a whole. So they're both positive, but the 1 half is not a whole number. So this would be a no. 7 is a positive whole number, so it would be a yes. 8 is a positive whole number, but negative 7 is not a positive whole number, so it would be no. This looks like it is a positive exponent, but if we were to rewrite it without a fraction, we'd have a negative exponent on the top, so it is also a no. So now we're going to talk about some features of polynomial graphs. Let's talk about end behavior. So that talks about what the graphs do at the end. I'm going to highlight what all of them do at the end. And we're going to notice some patterns. We have down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up. So they can either be going the same direction or opposite directions. So I want you guys to uh, copy this chart. So in behavior is based on two things, the degree and the leading coefficient. And remember the degree, if we had something like 2x squared or negative 2x squared, and my degree is 2, so it's even my leading coefficient is negative 2 so that makes it negative so i do even negative so it would be down down so go ahead and copy this we can continue this as we practice these so my i'm looking at my leading coefficient and my degree so my leading coefficient is positive my degree of 3 is odd. So I want positive odd, so it's going to be down, up. So falls on the left, rises on the right. We'll do the second one. My leading coefficient and my degree are the two things I'm looking at. My leading coefficient is negative my degree is even so negative even is down down so it's a fall fall the left side falls and the right side falls um, this next one is a little more challenging because I would have to do negative 5x. What this would end up looking like is I can just do all of the coefficients and I'd end up with negative 20x to the fourth. My leading coefficient is negative. My degree. is even so it'd be down down uh, 
I made a mistake. Our degree would be to the third. We have x times x times x, which makes this to the third. So my leading coefficient is negative. My degree is even or odd. So negative odd is up, down, or rises and falls. So it'd be that. So this is how we classify polynomials. You want to memorize that chart and have that chart handy. This is how we classify end behaviors of a polynomial. Okay, let's go ahead and think through some other features of a graph. The x-intercept, which is also zero, and multiplicity, and what that means. So, um, uh, x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So if you look at it, a graph like this crosses here and here. Multiplicity is the number of times a zero appears or repeats itself. For example, if I gave you um, this equation, we know that zero equals x plus two. 0 equals x plus 2. So x would equal negative 2 twice, but we would say this as negative 2 multiplicity of 2. In other words, it just appears on the graph twice. Or it just cross, it just has uh, a zero twice. So what this looks like on a graph is I know that this is the same as x times x, so it'd be like an x squared, so it'd be an up, up. It would only cross the graph once, but the multiplicity would be two. We're we'll go ahead and do the first one together. You guys can do the second one by yourself. So this is asking us um, what is the multiplicity, which zeros have multiplicity of 1, 2, and 3. So x minus 9 only appears once. So it has a multiplicity of 1. So 9. x minus 8. It also only appears once, so it had the multiplicity of 1. x plus 11 we can see that there's a 2 there, so it would have a multiplicity of 2. So we'd write that negative 11. Eight nine have a multiplicity of one. Negative 11 has a multiplicity of two. Multiplicity of three. That would have multiplicity of 3 because it appears 3 times. I want you guys to try the same idea for down here. If I have x equals 0. That's a multiplicity of 1, x minus 11. That has a multiplicity 
of one. That has a multiplicity of two because it appeared there twice, so negative six. And then x plus four. That also has a multiplicity of one because it only appeared once. And then if there's none, we write none. Okay, we still want to keep our factor chart out because we'll still be needing to use that. Um, finding the x and y intercepts of a polynomial function. So if we think about this, the x intercept is what is the x value when y equals 0. The y intercept is what is the y value when x equals 0. So we're going to either put a 0 in for y or a 0 in for x. So let's go ahead and find our x intercept first. Let's put a 0 in for y. This is four chunks, so I'm going to go ahead and factor this. Pull out a two. Then I'm going to do my grouping. I can pull out an x. I can pull out a negative four. Sorry, I can pull out an x squared. x plus 2. Guys, I keep making mistakes. So it should be 1. 1x one squared. So when I factor out an x squared, I end up with x plus 1. When I factor out negative 4, I get an x plus 1. This becomes 0 equals 2 times x minus x squared minus 4, x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 1. So now I set each of those factors that have an x equal to 0. So my so my x intercepts are that my y intercept I put a 0 in for x so everywhere I see a 0 or everywhere I see an x I put a 0 So when I put in a 0, I got out a negative 8, which makes my y-intercept 0, negative 8. Okay, this one's our x-intercept and our y-intercept again. So I'm going to do the x-intercept, which is setting the first part equal to 0, or the y equal to 0, and solving for x. So I can pull out a greatest common factor of an x. I need to factor this. I go back to my factoring tree. Three terms is an ACB tree. So 
a times b, a times c is 10 add to by b of negative 7, negative 5, and negative 2. Now I have three terms and I can do my grouping. I can pull out an x and pull out a negative 2. So I end up with 0 equals x, x minus 2, x minus 5, if I set each of those equal to 0. Yeah, x equals 2. x equals 5 and x equals 0, which makes my x intercepts 2, 0, 5, 0, 0, 0. Now remember my y intercept is 0, comma something. So everywhere I see an x, I'm putting a 0. which would end up getting a zero. So I put in a zero and I got out a zero. Ooh, sorry. And it would end up looking like that. Okay, so it gives us a graph here and it's asking us to find various parts of it. It says choose the end behaviors of the graph. So I'm going to take my leading coefficient, negative 1 times x times x times x, gets me negative 1x to the third. If I think about my chart, this is down and up. So that's part A. Um, so up and down. Part B asks us to find all the real zeros. So I'm going to set x plus 1 equal to 0, x minus 1 equal to 0, x minus 3 equal to 0 x equals negative 1, x equals 1, x equals 3, so x equals negative 1, 1, and 3. C asks us to find the y-intercept of the graph. So that basically wants f of 0. So what does it look like when I put in a 0? Um, we end up getting a negative 3. So it would be negative 3, and then D, it wants us to plot all of this with the information. So I have 1, negative, or negative 1, positive 1, and 3. I also know it crosses the y-axis at negative 3. I, need, I know it needs to end up. And down. So I go ahead and draw it looking like that. It's not perfect, but it works. Okay, this is the um, last type of problem we're going to do.
So I know that my end behavior is um, end behavior. I have a leading coefficient of two. My degree is three. That means I'm going to go down, up. So that shows me it's E or F. But now I need my zeros. Or my X intercepts. So I'm going to set. that equal to zero, I'm going to pull out a two. I can actually pull out a two X. I have three parts there. So A times C is negative six, which numbers multiply this negative six. But add to a b of negative 1, I can do negative 3 and positive 2. I have my matching and my mismatching, so this comes down to just being comfortable with our factoring. And then I'd set each of these equal to zero. So x equals zero. So my x intercepts would be zero, zero, negative two, zero, three, zero, which makes it the graph f. h of x should be easier. I have negative 1 times x to figure out my end behavior. I'd have x negative 1 times x times x times x times x because I have a squared. So negative 1 x to the fourth. So my leading coefficient is negative 1. My degree is 4. So I would end up with up, up, which really only leaves me the option of C, but we're going to go ahead and finish this out. So my zeros are my x-intercepts. I'd have x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. Um, so the point zero two and zero negative two, which would leave me with graph C. And we made a mistake. This would be down down because it was negative. Actually, I didn't catch that. So I'd be down, down, crossing at positive 2 and negative 2. So it would be graph D.